So the universal sign for pointing, do you know what that is? <laughs> Hey everybody, Ethan here with Standing Stone and we are out at the Lone Duck headquarters with... Bob Owens from Lone Duck. And awesome. Sweet girl Memphis. Memphis. She's so glad to be here joining, joining us today. They are feeling the fall, the leaves are changing, life looks beautiful in New York right now. So one thing that we're gonna go over today is a question that we kinda get a lot, which is terminology. You know, I think that the problem with the terminology aspect of things is there are a fair amount of variables. Some people can use slightly different words or have slightly different meanings to them. And when you are an outsider or a newbie looking in on this, right. it gets really confusing really fast. That's right. So what we've done is compile the list of everyday cues or commands, the way that you use it, um, that we use both with retrievers and pointing dogs. And then uh, we kind of have some that fall into the category of just pointers or just retrievers. So we're gonna go over those real fast for you. Now, if this is your first time to the channel, this is the first video you are finding of ours, hit the subscribe button. Do it. Smash the thumbs up button. And then also bop over and hit the Lone Duck YouTube channel. He's putting up videos on the weekly of retrieving drills, yep. how to work through a young dog and take them to some more advanced stuff. The things that you really can't find out there, he's starting to put up on the internet. Absolutely. Awesome, let's go ahead and get started with this. Let's do it baby, let's come so, on. So, some of the basics. This one's an easy one. We've got sit. What does sit mean? Sit down. Pretty self-explanatory and I think that works both sides. Now there's a little bit of play with um, should I teach my pointer to sit? And the answer is yes, as long as you have an understanding, they can learn sit and well both. But sit's pretty straight, straightforward. And for me, sit means sit. It doesn't mean sit for five seconds. It doesn't mean sit until you feel like getting up. It means sit. I don't use stay. Okay. You use stay. Stay is applied. Right, stay is, is, is implied. implied. There's right. the word we were looking for. Yeah, stay implied. is implied until you're told another command which would segue into our next command, okay. Okay. Until yeah. I give a release, which would be okay, or here, or heal, something off of sit, they yep. should sit there. And now, caveat that real quick with, you know, there's eight week old puppies, 12 week old yeah, puppies. They're not going to sit and stay forever. Right. But a dog like this, who's six years old, she knows sit down on this dog stand and, and don't get up. Absolutely. So we've got sit and then we jumped in there on okay. That would be just a general release from anything that you're doing essentially. That's right. Next one that we have is kennel. Now for us, we use the term kennel for any place we want the dog to go and stay. We kind of generalize the term as a platform can mean kennel, loading into the truck can mean kennel, dog boxes kennel, all of those things. It's really easy for a dog to understand. Kennel means go to this place and stay there. That's right. Uh, we're the same. Cool. Yeah. On into or onto something and stay there until told otherwise. Some people like to add extra words like load up or place for a board. All I'm saying right there, those are extra words for your brain. The dog doesn't really need them. That's right. So another one that we have is hear or come. That one again is pretty self-explanatory. It means dog coming to you, um, but it means the dog coming to you. For us specifically, I hear a lot of people say, here, here, and the dog gets most of the way and they're like, good dog. No, here means here, right? Yeah, that's right. Here doesn't mean my general vicinity. Uh, it means right to me so I can either keep them safe, clip them up on a leash, or give them another command to go do something else. But here means here, right here, right now, let's roll. Yep. Uh, yeah. Next one we've got is honoring. That one's a good one to move into. Oh, yeah. no, 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 let's do heel. That's a, a basic oh, yeah. obedience again. Yep. Heel again um, is the act of walking by your side. A lot of people talk about taking dogs for walks or being on leash and they say we have bad leash manners or something else, or they're looking for, because we have our easy leads that a lot of people like to utilize for heel training and they want a longer leash. Well, you don't need a longer leash because the dog should be right by your side. Heel for me is, right by my side, staying with me. Now we primarily teach left side, but a dog can learn right side or a dog can actually learn both. Um, but for us, it's, it's primarily left, keeping it simple that way. I agree. Uh, I think a dog that can be comfortable 
working off your right side. If you're a uh, left-handed shooter and you're banging rounds, at least in a Labrador world, and you're shooting or you've got an auto loader and it's ejecting towards your dog, the shotgun shell, then you'd want your dog on the opposite side of where those shotgun shells are getting shot out. So that's a good at. point. That's so, a good point. So a lot of lefties will run their dog on the right side and heel on the right side. A lot of righties will hear their, heel, heel the their dog on the left. So, and it's some people, it's personal preference. But again, for me, every dog that comes here learns to heel on the left side. Yeah. And I feel like as a whole, keeping it pretty consistent is going to be beneficial in a majority of dog training situations. That's right. Now we have one that there's going to be probably a little more variance in, but it's a term that both of us use. That is fetch. Mm. So in the our F world, word. the F the word. The other F word. The other F word is, uh, and for a lot of dogs, it probably sounds like an F word. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it, it, it kind of it comes into more of the formal aspect for us. It's the more the formal aspect of retrieving. Yes. And when we say fetch, that means go pick it up, hold on to it, come back and deliver properly. Now that pro that delivery could be to the front or it could be swinging back into a heel position. Kind of depends on a personal preference there. For me, it's finished at a healing position because then we're ready to move forward to the next thing. I now, agree. Is there any real difference that you're typically using fetch in, in your training? So the difference that I've seen for a lot of guys and, and gals in the pointer world is when a bird is knocked down, yeah. they'll release their dog on the fetch, fetch command. Yeah, it just means go pick something up, bring it back. So for me, I release my dogs on their name. So if we shoot a bird and it's her turn to go and get it, I'll say her name to release her versus fetch. Because what I, I don't want a dog stressed out. Stress is loose terms, but I want them to go, use their eyes, use their nose, worry about hunting an area and finding their bird fetch to me means there is something right here pick it up right now deliver to heel sit hang on to it and give it to me it's a good point and i think i've created and the retriever world has created the you know it's on the ground snap it up grab it yep and i don't want looseness to where they can just run amok and don't have to find it like if they don't want to, okay. that can happen. They'll, dogs will blink birds and not want to pick them up because the F word, they've felt pressure from the F word. And you used another term there in the terminology aspect of things that people ask about. What does blink mean? We're going to go into that in just a second. Okay. So remind me, but fetch, yeah. we're still on. Yeah. So I want a dog to be comfortable and confident to go pick up a bird or a bumper without being like, oh my gosh, he said fetch, I gotta go get it right now. And no, the, man, relax, go do it. The reason that the dogs build that almost a little bit of anxiousness or That's right. anxiety around that is because it comes with formal retrieving work. And in that formal retrieving work or force fetch as some people refer to it, it is uh, it is a pushing process. They it's need to have and understand a compulsion process. That's yeah. a good word. And it's saying you have to do this. There are no options. And that's, right. that's to really polish and finish a dog. So we don't typically use it as fetch and, and fun bumper aspect of things. That's it becomes right. a behavior that's applied directly to a term. Yeah. So for me, my difference is fetch means pick something up, hang on to it, and right. deliver yeah. to hand, and hold on to it nicely. Don't chomp it, roll it, spit it, any of that. I don't really say hold to a dog anymore. It's implied. It's impl again, it's implied. Once I've created fetch and they'll whoop, grab onto it and hang onto it, then hold goes away because if they don't hold it, they get fetch. Yeah, fetch means grab it, hold it. That's so right. it becomes implied. That's right. So good. that's a difference. That's good. Now, quickly to touch on blinking, yep. this is typically the dog's acknowledgement of something, whether that be a bird or a bumper or scent for pointing a scent for trying to make a retrieve, anything. They acknowledge the task at hand and they pull off of it as an avoidance tactic right. for that situation. That's referred to as blinking. It's, I would say, ventured to throw a statistic of 99.9% .9 man-made. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. it's... Or bird-made. Maybe the or bird, bird spooked made. them. Yeah, that's true. Uh, so a there'd be bird a spooked percentage. Them or something. Yeah. Um, but it's a bad experience associated with that bird or bumper or task 
and they pull off of it for avoidance. So that's right. blinking. If someone says, my dog blinks birds, they usually are trying to point or going up to retrieve and they say not pull off of it. So some dogs get really sneaky about it to where he's like, did they blink that? Yeah. I don't even know. Yeah. So that would be blinking. That's now, right. another term that we both use, and I think it's a, it's a similar concept, but a different application okay. is honoring. Yeah. So in the pointing world, honoring and um, and then the term from, do you ever use the term backing from a retriever standpoint? No. Okay, so honoring and backing get interchanged with pointing dogs, and we're gonna talk about backing later, but honoring specifically right now means the opportunity uh, for one dog to watch another dog complete the task. Now, with pointing dogs, it's going to be watching, coming in on that dog that's on point, and then watching them get to make the retrieve, and being steady respecting that yeah and, and being steady through that yep yeah so our honoring is two dogs are working me and ethan shoot a bird down i've got my dog on a platform here and, or a, and by sit here or whatever exactly we both shoot birds uh my dog gets this retrieve or even a single bird right for simplification we shoot one bird one dog's going to get that retrieve yeah i'm sending memphis your dog has to sit and honor the working dog. So sit still, be steady, remain under control, and, and work with another dog. On a slightly greener stage, let's say you've got young dogs in the field working together in a two young pointing dogs that aren't necessarily 100% steady yet. Bird gets shot and both dogs go to that bird. One dog that is the loser should say, all right, you've got it, and honor that retrieve as well and not fight over the bird. So right. it's a similar concept, but Slightly different applications are yeah. used with it. Okay, so we've covered some of the big ones that we could think of that are used on both aspects of the game. Now we're gonna move into retriever specific things. Things okay. that uh, I don't even really know what some of these things mean on this list. So <laughs> let's um, do it, baby. Now, to start off with the easy ones, um, you use two terms pretty often, uh, which are good and no. Explain those for me. Okay. So, and how you're using them. Yeah. So when we're talking about marks and blinds, let's break those down. A mark is a bird that that dog saw fall and okay. you're releasing them on their name to go and get that bird. A blind is a bird they did not see fall. Okay. And we have to now turn the instinct of marking and see, using their eyes, nose and getting the bird and hunting for it. Turn that off and say, I'm the, we're a team, but I'm the captain, coach, leader. Sure. Follow me. I'm going to send you on a line and handle you, cast you through the field or water to get to that bird. That's a blind retrieve. So these good and no and you're here and heels, these are all little cues and commands that we give to line a dog up properly. Developing a cadence, developing if you will. Yeah, developing a cadence, developing a rhythm of teamwork of, if that dog didn't see a bird fall, sure. here, here, good, right there. Good. <laughs> Perked up already. Yes, did. Good. And then back. It's and, a, and back would be the release on a blind. It's a cool thing to witness when they start to figure out that cadence because when I was working a little bit with Sprig in the past, now I actually have, if you guys haven't seen already, we have a little puppy from... Bob's last litter, mm -hmm. that's, uh, his name is Clutch. He's going through all of the paces and right now he's doing puppy work, but we did a series with Sprig that I actually got from a kennel up in Wisconsin. That's Riverstone Kennels. They do a great job too. Different uh, breedings, different lines, and there's a place for both. But Sprig and his stuff, we started working on some of that similar cadence as he was doing some lining drills and things. Mm -hmm. And to watch him cue on that, perk up his ears and understand that that meant not to go, but that he was looking and focused and, and headed the right direction. That's right. Actually. So Yeah, so I just build these cues. Builder. Yeah, it's confidence builder. I just build these cues, these cadences. So, you know, no can legit mean no. Don't don't eat that dead mouse. No. Yeah. Uh, don't jump on my countertop. No. Don't jump on me. No. Or it could mean no. You're not looking in the right direction, okay? No, here. Good. Inflection, tone Good. means a lot. That's right. Yeah, it means so much. And the dogs pick up on everybody's individual cues, so working as a team with your dog to, to get those cues down. But the, in this list, in the, this 
scenario, no and good are helping a dog line up, build confidence going out on a blind retrieve and getting ready. That's awesome. Next one that we have down here and one that um, I think gets confused on when to properly use would be back. What does that mean? Right. So back is the command given to send a dog on a blind retrieve. Okay. So remember verse on a mark, they saw that bird go down. I'm going to release them on their name. I'm going to change Good. that, that one's up. the next one on the list. Uh -huh, nice. I'm going to change it up and I'm going to say, we're going to run a blind. So you can cue them up with like a dead bird or dead or. Verbiage isn't as important as inflection in this situation and being consistent with it. That's right. Okay. But I'll just, I'll pull the dog and say dead bird. And now it's like, okay, we're running a blind. And then I'll line them up with my body. Good. Right there. Back. So back we've taught. It's a part of the pressure system, if you will. So we went through force fetch, collar conditioning, force to a pile. Okay. And that compulsion to leave my side and go fetch a bumper that's 80 yards away i'm gonna instead of saying fetch and having them run it's now gonna switch to back mm -hmm. and now back has a new meaning and they leave my side and go get something now yeah <laughs> I mean, there's and, so much to it but it's cued to blind situation yeah, it's a blind retrieve okay now, there were a bunch of other things that Bob just mentioned in there I that know. you may be going, wait, right. wait, 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 what did he say? That's right. And what I want to say with that is you're going to, if you jump over to his channel, you're going to start to see a lot of those things pop up as drills, like force to a pile and list some of the other ones you said. T pattern, T -patterns. lining paths. Um, swim by. Swim by. Okay. Yeah, there's yeah. so many little drills to teach handling and then to use these skill sets that you're teaching the dog. So instead of jumping into those now, I want you guys to go over and check out his channel. As those pop up, you're going to see new videos explaining how that drill works, why it works, and why to do it. Right. Now, another one here is the name, which you briefly touched on, yep. but why are we using their name as a from a retrieving standpoint? Okay, so let's say Ethan brings his dog and I'm hunting with Memphis. We knock two birds down. Mm -hmm. If we both use the same command, fetch, right? Both dogs, both are dogs going. might go. If we use like some, for some reason, people in Maine like to say back for marking, marking too. So, so no judgment, Maine listeners and viewers. Absolutely. Uh, I'm with you. Whatever. Bring whatever. us some lobster. That's right. I love lobster. <laughs> <laughs> so if they both are conditioned and taught that back means to go for their retrieve, sure. then now both dogs are going. So if we use each dog's individual name. Yep. If you say Clutch, Memphis didn't hear her name. She should honor the do working dog. Yes. If I say Memphis, future Clutch should not go. So names are used to send on marks. That's right. Okay. And unless we have two uh, Drakes or <laughs> Deeks or Gunners. <laughs> gunners. Yep. Sorry, not poking, but they're pretty they're common They're super names. common. Yeah, yeah, they're super common names. Yep. Okay, so we've got those. We have three more. Go, um, what do we we have a... Diversion. Okay. So a diversion would be me and you are duck hunting. Now we actually, I should have put this one on the same list because we actually utilize this, but go ahead and explain it. Okay. And I'll make sure that I'm, I'm thinking the same thing. All right. So a diversion, you could have a diversion shot or a diversion bird. Diversion shot is dogs coming back with a retrieve and a shot goes off and maybe you missed the bird and nothing happens, but the dog still has to deliver that bird to hand nicely. They can't drop the bird and go hunt off on its own. And it's a whatever. normal thing that's going to happen in a hunting situation? Absolutely. And essentially... Especially if you hunt with my brother, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> Poor guy. Kevin! Got him. Um, but it's essentially distraction. Exactly. Yep. Now, and a diversion bird Okay. is, let's say I'm hunting with you, Yep. and you smoke that bird, and Memphis has got a bird in her mouth. <laughs> the guy with the paint gun doesn't miss. That's right. So Memphis is coming back with the beautiful Drake Mallard, and she's coming back, coming back, coming back. Ethan rolls this next duck, probably shot a hen, um, <laughs> and he dumps it in Man. the decoys right next to Memphis. She should not leave the bird in her mouth. She should not spit it and go and get that bird. Turn to look at it, then complete the retrieve. Then complete the retrieve. That's a good thing. And, and that's and a problem I see a lot of young dogs do. It's like, oh, crap, drop it. Go pick the other one up. Right, exactly. And now, you know, some people might say, like, well, who cares? They're still bringing you a bird back. 
well, what if the original bird she retrieved cripple. is a cripple? Mm -hmm. Now that cripple is going to get away and that one's stone dead or something. So yeah. once they are through force fetch and understand that once they get something, they got to hang on to and bring it back to me, I'll start incorporating diversion birds in training. Probably in smaller steps where you do the diversion shots first. That's right. And then diversion birds. That's and, the big one. And I'll also simplify so that diversion bird, you know, the dog's coming from oh, over, yeah, here, over here. I'll throw it over there yeah. so it's less enticing. And then I'll... Because distance... You had a really good saying the other day. Distance... Erodes control. There you go. Yeah, distance erodes control. So creating more distance from that bird that I've... The diversion bird is going to give Helps me more control. Helps to maintain control. That's right. Sorry. I cool. didn't know where you were going with that. My no, bad. no, I wasn't good. on my A game. No, no, no. All right, no, what else good. we got, brother? All right, we've got uh, blind retrieve you already touched on. Yeah. And that was a good thing with back. There was a good explanation of backing with back excuse me with blind retrieves and what blind retrieves are yep um and then the last one we have on this list right now is retired gun yeah what the heck is is that like uh that's peter back there is a retired old, gun that's right that's your 65 <laughs> year old guy that comes out and helps you he's retired he's a retired gun that's right okay uh this is a field trial term and it would be in a field trial they'll have white coats Gotcha. Guys and gals throwing birds. White's easy to see. Yup, so they can mark at 400 yards. And that retired gun, let's say we've got a triple. Uh huh. First bird comes out, second bird comes out, third bird comes out. They're going to go get that bird. And now one or two of these guys in the white coats are going to retire into the woods or behind a holding blind they and disappear. disappear. Okay. So now the dog comes back, looks out, and he's like, where'd those guys go? Oh, they must have retired. Uh huh. So uh -huh. they go back. Everybody that hide. retires goes home. That's right. Yeah, yeah exactly. So, yeah. you know, it's not a super common name or, or terminology for it's more of a field hunting thing. thing. It's a field trial thing. But I do get asked a lot because it's thrown around. And it's like you can't find a definition, not in the dictionary. But there it is, folks. You heard it here. Retired, Retired gun. Retired guns. Okay, so let's go ahead and move into some pointing dog things. Now, as we move into this, you guys that are watching, I want you to be thrown in the comments below. You say, Hey, 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 you missed whatever. Uh, what does this mean? Throw it in the comments below. We'll get to those, or if there's enough of them, create a whole separate video covering the ones that we're missing here. Now, when we talk about pointing dogs, we're gonna start with something very simple. What does pointing mean? That is the act of, yeah, everybody's got arms in there. <sighs> um, it's a, that is the number one, or, or, or no, pick up this. a leg, yeah. yeah, yep. So the universal sign for pointing, do you know what that is? <laughs> I don't. What do we got? If we're in the field, if we're working with a dog, I've got a dog on point over here. Uh -huh. It's a hat in the air, a circle. That's uh, my dog's on point bringing in for an honor. Oh, no way. Yeah. Now you, you learn something new I every know. day. I just go, ooh, we're point. Ooh. Uh, and a lot of times when we've got clients out, you know, I see this over there. Like, I can't see that very well. Yeah. Throw your hat in the air. That's right. Cool. So, pointing is just the essential either sight or scent. They're either smelling or seeing a bird and they lock up and stop moving. So pointing pretty straightforward there. Now backing, and this is what I asked you before, yep. a lot of times goes hand in hand with honoring, but backing would be essentially one dog pointing another dog. It's pretty straightforward. They come in, they see that dog. Some dogs do it really naturally. Some dogs kind of need to be handled into it mm -hmm. um, by utilizing what we're gonna go to next is, whoa. Whoa means stop and stand there. Whoa doesn't mean stand there for a second and move on. That's right. Stay is implied in that situation. Whoa means stop and stand there. And it has to be taught in baby steps. But ultimately, when we have a firm understanding, whoa, it should mean stand there. That's right. Now, the biggest thing that I see out of people um, working with their dogs, they end up saying, whoa, and they use it too many times or they use it in a semi-confusing situation and then the dog ends up sitting down or staying there or doing something and then they're like, oh, okay, good dog. What I wanted you to do was kind of stay here or stop moving, but I'm okay with sitting or standing or vice versa. Um, and that's where it becomes very confusing for the dog. Does well mean sit? Does well mean stand? I don't really know. Keep it straightforward. If you're saying, whoa, that should mean stop and stand there. Now, on average, I would say that dogs are, are going to respond better to whoa in a field-based setting. And they respond better to sit 
in a house or family or around the yard based setting. They seem to just make sense or click better because the dog's natural response when they point something is to do it standing. Right. And that whoa gets directly applied to, you know, holding a point longer and longer and longer to the extent of what we can move into steady to wing shot and fall, yep. steady to shot, steadiness. What do all of those things mean? That would be one where we say that word as well, steadiness. Steady? Yeah. Okay. And it's the same definition. A bird is shot and that dog doesn't move until we release it. Okay. I think that when you talk about steadiness with pointing dogs, there's a little more that goes into it that gets confusing. It doesn't really mean anything different, but people start using it different. And you can say, I have a dog that's steady to wing. Well, what does that mean exactly? A lot of times it's gonna be referred to their steady until the bird flies. So steady to the wing or they're steady to wing where they're steady through the flush of the bird while it takes flight. Right. Um, I think just, and then they're steady to shot where you have a dog that stands until the shot goes off right. or a, a dog that stands through the shot. Um, we typically, then you have steady to wing shot and fall where you're kind of incorporating all of those things right. or steady to release. It's all in an attempt to have a better understanding of what that dog's actually doing steadiness wise. Now with our average young green dog, we allow them to break with the wing. It's the most natural thing for them to do because of the fact that they are predators. They see that movement, they wanna chase it. The pointing instinct is a lot of times driven by scent and a stocking, an underlying stocking behavior. And they figure out through generations of breeding that standing there is ideal. That's and right. then when that bird goes, they wanna go with it. So that's natural, it's easy to maintain. The next level that a lot of people try and take dogs to would be allowing them to break at the shot. Now, it kind of comes around, I think, from a, a safety standpoint. Most of the time, people are like, I don't want them in front of the gun. If they were waiting until the gun goes off, they're going to be safer. Well, that is, in my opinion, the most difficult to maintain of any of the steadiness levels. And right. the reason you're for like that- You're half in. Yeah, you're half in. and Nobody's half pregnant. <laughs> I don't think ah. that's a thing, but when you are steady the shot, what ends up happening is as the shooter, you pull your focus to the bird. That's right. When did the dog go? You don't know. We don't know. And in training, I show this every time somebody's kind of interested in this aspect of things. We take a dog that is steady to that level, or they say they're steady to shot, and we start to pull up and we wait. Well, Normally it takes a second and a half or two seconds, whatever, you pull up, you swing a little bit, it's like a second, something yeah. not long, boom. The dog times that, they're really good at anticipating things. And then we pull up on a bird and I don't shoot and then here you go, yeah. the dog is taken off in your peripheral. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They anticipate all of that. So it's the most difficult to maintain. If you have a dog that's steady to wing shot fall or steady to retrieve, they're steady through all of it. They're waiting to be sent to go make that retrieve. and. Sorry. That's not, I'm gonna say easier to maintain, but it is easier than steady to shot because it's it's more black and white. Did it, the dog move, did the dog not? That's right, it's more black and white and you've taken the dog further. So it's, it is that half pregnant mentality where it's like, they're almost there, they're almost there. Why wouldn't you just finish the job and the task at hand and make sure it's solidified Yeah. versus the, the halfway there is gonna degrade so quickly. Absolutely. To does. where it's as soon as you kick your feet to try and get the bird up, they're now gone. they're gone. Yeah. So they were to the shot, but it's gone quick. It keeps, and it's very easy for it to degrade. Now, um, I'm not gonna say at all, hunting the dog steady to wing shot and fall or steady to release is easy, but it is maintainable sure. and it's a lot, you gotta pay a little more attention to the dog. And that's the same thing in the blind. Yeah, 100%. I mean, you can't just let the dog start breaking and expect them, oh, they're gonna they're gonna stay steady. Yeah. You we gotta stay on top of it, you gotta watch it. Yeah, yeah. you're the dog guy. You gotta be the watching dog. the dog a little bit. Yeah, you're responsible for their actions, their safety, and the fun of you and your hunting party, making Absolutely. sure that that steadiness, I mean, there's gotta be nothing worse than having a, a beautiful rooster fly in front of you and here comes a dog jumping up underneath it and you gotta pull off of it. Or you watch your client who's a, a newbie pull up and it's and gun they barrel. Don't and they don't have the awareness of the dog there. awareness that the dog's there and their peripheral vision is like this because they just see that rooster tail. Yeah, so, it's a sad day. It could be. So yeah. yeah, I just, steadiness is key, baby. 
100%. Now, the last one that I have for pointing dogs is brace work. Now, brace work. Orthodontics. Or <laughs> that's a, that's a, I mean, it's a it's confusing a word, sure, right? Why not? So a brace, brace mate, or brace work is all referring to running multiple dogs in the field. If you've got two dogs out there, it's referred to as a brace. And it typically comes from a field trial or a testing situation. You run a brace of dogs, multiple dogs in the field, usually just two. Your brace mate is the dog that you're running with. And brace work would be the work that's being done with two dogs. Now, all of those brace work is kind of what pulls into the honoring and the backing, right. those other things that are involved in there. And uh, it's as simple as it's the other dog in the field with you. That's right. Well, that is the list of cues. It was a good one. There's a lot of them there. I hope that that helps to clear things up for you guys. And like I said, if you've got some extra ones that you think we missed here, throw them in the comments below. I'm the guy with the pink gun. Bob from Lone Dog, baby. We'll see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.